Hello, this is Greg Guma from Maverick Media. Once upon a time, Burlington voters faced a difficult choice between the leader of an ad hoc coalition that crossed party lines and a Democrat with solid backing from the political establishment. A third candidate, displeased by the group's choice, entered the race late and made a decision even tougher for the local voters. And the race might be decided by just 40% of the vote. If this sounds familiar, that may be because that was the basic situation in 1981 when Bernie Sanders ran an insurgent campaign to defeat Democratic incumbent Gordon Paquette who had been mayor for uh, about 10 years and was the de facto leader of a faction in Burlington known then as the Republicrats. And the third candidate was a restaurateur, Richard Bowe, who had challenged Paquette in the caucus and then ran as an independent. Now, oddly enough, it also roughly describes the 2012 race, which comes to a conclusion this week. Mira Weinberger is this time a well-connected Democrat, but also an outsider, the candidate who is promising, but also threatening, the most change. The Republican is Kurt Wright, who has created a multi-party coalition. He's reached out beyond his long-established base in the New North End with the support of Democrats, independents, and even a progressive official. But this alliance also looks like the return of the Republicrats. The independent is Wanda Hines, who has created not so much a coalition, but a movement in the no uh, Old North End around herself. She's a city employee and a past ally of the current mayor, Bob Kiss, and she has publicly com uh, complimented the Republican Kurt Wright. She's defended the administration, and she's further complicated the race for a number of progressives. On March 6th, voters in Vermont's largest city will settle this matter, at least for the next three years. It will be an election that could prove as consequential as the one that turned Bernie Sanders into a household name and launched Vermont's modern progressive movement. In 1981, the implications of the political upheaval on the horizon were not apparent. Very few people had thought about what would happen if Bernie Sanders actually got elected. This time, pretty much everyone knows that some kind of change is coming, but what kind and what the long-term impact will be, well, that is as murky as ever. The campaign has been unprecedented, the most expensive and the longest in local history. Weinberger's biggest donors have been his parents and Senator Patrick Leahy. But at least 25000 has come from out-of-state contributors who gave more than $1,000 each. He's also benefited from considerable support from the state Democratic Party. Now, Kurt Wright, consistent with his nonpartisan approach, or at least rhetoric, ruled out Republican Party support. He also didn't seek out-of-state contributions. This is a distinction he has tried to make with Mira Weinberger. But... Wright's donor list is nevertheless quite impressive, featuring many well-connected Republicans and influential developers. Some of his earliest contributors were Jeffrey Davis, Gary Farrell, Antonio Pomelo, Angela Pizzagalli, a group of development moguls in Vermont that has since been described by Wright in his speeches as some of the best. They've been joined by Ray Picor, who owns Lake Champlain Transportation, and Wright has frequently uh, talked about Picor's vision for a hotel and convention center on his private land on the waterfront. Aside from being the most expensive campaign, this is also the first one in several decades in which there isn't an explicitly progressive candidate. Sanders ran for four times in the 1980s. Peter Clavel served 14 of the next 16 years. That was a record-breaking tenure. Bob Kiss ran in 2006 and then again in 2009, both times with instant runoff voting. But instant runoff voting was also contested after that second race because it was so close and the third round resulted 
in Kiss's victory over Kurt Wright. Wright and his supporters, who were incensed by this outcome, felt it was unfair and launched a campaign to repeal IRB, which they succeeded in doing in 2010. Uh, since then, troubling facts have uh, arisen about Burlington Telecom uh, and also finances in general, and there was even an attempt to remove Bob Kiss from office at a certain point. Uh, things have calmed down since now, but Wright remembers the recent past and he feels that uh, the, the outcome in 2009 was a mistake and his election will correct that mistake. We will see. He might have trouble getting 50%, but 40% is an outcome he and his campaign can envision. Hines speaks as if her victory is also inevitable, but actually, demographically speaking, it is highly unlikely, since turnout in the ward where she is strongest, the Old North End, tends to be the lightest, whereas turnout tends to be the heaviest in Kurt Wright's part of town, the New North End. Uh, Weinberger has a significant base to begin with throughout the city uh, with the Democratic Party, and especially in the South End, but the issue is whether he's going to be able to uh, develop, uh, develop or deliver the kind of campaign organization that's going to overcome the outreach and the inroads uh, Wright has made beyond his base. Uh, so that's the race in a nutshell, and however it ends, change is inevitable. But on the other hand, no matter who takes charge in April, or which advisors accompany that person into power. The challenges facing Burlington, debt, development, infrastructure, crime, the quality of life, economic inequities, and the impacts of social, racial, and ethnic diversity, all those will remain the same. This has been Greg Guma with a video diary for Maverick Media.